is Ruby on Rails worth learning in 2021? And this is a question I got asked quite a lot last year when I posted content on Ruby on Rails on my YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with the videos I create, I normally create a lot of Ruby on Rails content on this channel. So before we try to answer this question, let's just talk about where Ruby on Rails came from, how long it's been around. Ruby on Rails was first released to the public in 2004 and Ruby on Rails was adopted as a new up and coming open source project. So I first get into Ruby on Rails, uh, I think it was around 2012, 2011, something like that. Now at this point in time, Ruby on Rails was very, very popular and a lot of people were using it to build their own startups, to build their own projects. And that was one of the big things that attracted me to it. Um, at that point in time, I was building projects in PHP and I was using MVC frameworks like CodeIgniter, CakePHP. When I was using these MVCs, I would get this feeling like I was just doing things over and over again, um, repeating myself a lot in the platforms that I would build or the projects that I would build. At that point in time, I was building my first SaaS project. So at that time, Ruby on Rails was very popular and I just wanted to test it out, see for myself why everyone was using it and it very quickly became a tool I used a lot. I was still building freelance projects in PHP back then, but uh, when I tried to do anything on my own, I would always switch to Ruby on Rails and try to use that framework. So what I would notice at that time was a lot of the features that I want to build is already out there. People were building gems for them. And for many of those features, they were already built into the framework. So they came out of the box. An example of this is form validation, database migrations, a lot of these things that just weren't quite there in some of the other MVCs I were using, they required a lot of writing your own custom code for your own validations. A lot of these things just came out of the box in Ruby on Rails. So for me, it was a really great way to save time when building projects. So let's look at why you may want to use Ruby on Rails. The big reason for me for using Ruby on Rails in 2021 has always been around building new projects and building them quickly and allowing yourself the opportunity to change things really quickly. So the speed is a huge factor for me. And if you watch any of the videos I create on YouTube for Ruby on Rails, that I was able to build things really quickly. So I spent maybe two or three days building a project that would normally have taken me weeks if I used a different language or a different framework. So for me, it was all about saving time. I could build projects in days rather than weeks. And this was a huge benefit as it allowed me to experiment more with projects. And for me, that was one of the biggest reasons that I enjoy using Ruby on Rails. It allows me that ability to be flexible. I can change things really quickly and I can add new features without spending a ton of time writing code. So everything doesn't need to be done from scratch. Many things out there you already have a gem for, a Ruby gem for, and that allows you just to drop that in, make a few tweaks and you're up and running quite quickly. So it's all about just using the best resources for your time. So one of the biggest reasons why people think that they shouldn't learn Rails or they get advised not to learn Rails is because Ruby on Rails is not as popular as it once was. When you look back at 2010, 2012, Ruby on Rails was really popular back then and as a reason many people flock to it, but ultimately it comes down to what is your use case. Are you going to use Ruby on Rails to build a startup? If so, I think it's a fantastic choice to do that. But if you're gonna use it for something like web scraping, or maybe you're trying to do something with like AI or machine learning, then it's probably not the best choice for you. But ultimately it comes down to what the use case is, how are you going to use it, and will it save you time? Another angle to consider when learning Ruby on Rails is the job market. If you are looking to get a job as a developer, then you may want to consider how many jobs are out there for this specific technology. And of course, like Ruby on Rails is not as popular as it was many years ago. It still matured over this time. So there are plenty of companies that built projects over this past 10 years, and those projects are still built on Ruby on Rails. And those companies need a good developer to work on those projects, to update it, to add new features. So there's always going to be projects out there that is built on Ruby on Rails. And I think that's going to be the case for many more years to come. Now, when I learned Ruby on Rails, it was not about getting a job. For me, I learned it intentionally because I wanted to use it to build new startups, new projects. So again, it comes down to what you want to get from it. 
So my general advice is Ruby on Rails has developed a lot over this past few years and it is constantly being worked on by the team behind it. So if you are concerned about it being out of date or being slow, those things are constantly being updated. So the fact that it's been around for 16 years now should not be an issue to tell you to stop learning it. Your focus should really be on, can it do what you need it to do? Does it help you in some way? And knowing that there is a team behind it constantly updating it and adding new features should give you the confidence to know that this is going to be around for at least a few more years. So I would definitely recommend that if you're building your own platform, if you're building your own service, maybe it's a SaaS application or it's a e-commerce application, Ruby on Rails is really fantastic for building your own service or building your own web application. And if you do want to learn more about Ruby on Rails, make sure to check out my course. I'll put the link in the description below. So I have a Udemy course which teaches you all the basics of learning Ruby on Rails. And I have new courses that are coming out very soon that will help you build full applications in Ruby on Rails. Another question that comes up quite often is can Ruby on Rails scale? I may do another video on that in more detail, but the one thing to note is that many of the companies that were using it previously are still using it. So some of these big companies are still using Ruby on Rails to run their service. Now an example of that is Shopify. On Shopify, there are tens of thousands of e-commerce stores running on their platform, if not hundreds of thousands. But the thing to note with them is that they are still using Ruby on Rails and they may use other technology too, but it is still part of what they are using. And they did post an announcement about this. I think it was uh, on 2019 or 2018. It was on the Black Friday sale. There were hundreds of thousands of transactions happening in such a short period of time. And they were able to process this using Ruby on Rails. So when you hear people talking about can Ruby on Rails scale and this may be a reason that they don't use it, it's completely ridiculous because in most cases, people have such tiny projects that they're working on. And if a company like Shopify can use it to run tens of thousands of stores and collect hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue, then there's completely no reason to worry about scaling projects in Ruby on Rails. One thing to note about Ruby on Rails is that you will see it used in many of the coding boot camps. Now, the reason for this is because Rails is actually quite easy to learn and the programming language behind it, Ruby, is very much like the English language. It's very easy to read, it's very clean, it's minimalistic. You don't need to write verbose code in order to achieve a simple task. And that is actually why I created my Ruby course, just to show how easy it is to build things in Ruby. The language is just really clean and nice to use, and I highly recommend you checking out the Ruby language if you haven't already. You'll see how simplistic it is when you compare it against some of the other languages out there. So knowing that there are all these boot camps out there teaching people Ruby on Rails, it still tells us that there are plenty of platforms being built in Ruby on Rails. And as a result, there will be maintenance work, constant features being built on these platforms. There's always gonna be work in Ruby on Rails. So just to recap, the things that you should be thinking about are employability. If you want to get a job in the tech space, is Ruby on Rails a good choice for you? And that really comes down to how many jobs there are out there. Secondly, you want to think about if you're using it for a startup or for a uh, side project that you're building, can it save you time? Will it save you time? Will it save you energy? Will you be allowed to experiment with your project more and not have to spend tons of time writing code to achieve what you need to do for your project? And lastly, you want to think about, is it being maintained? Is it being updated as the years go past? And the team behind it has released Ruby on Rails 6 last year. And there are plenty of updates that are being released for Ruby on Rails. So ultimately the decision is up to you, but my personal opinion is that there is still plenty of reasons to be learning Ruby on Rails in 2021. And my question to you right now is, what programming language are you learning? What framework are you using? And if you're using Ruby on Rails, tell me why you enjoy using it in the comments below. And that also goes if you're not using Ruby on Rails, if you're using a different platform, different framework, let me know why you're using it and what benefits it makes in terms of your project or your job. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you guys have learned something here today and this has answered the question of should you learn Ruby on Rails in 2021? So I hope that you guys have found this helpful in some way. If you have, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content. And I will see you all in the next video.